What's up, family? All right, so Steve Buck Dancing Harvey is back in the news. It's TMZ caught him out on the streets and stuck a mic in his face and asked him some questions about Donald Trump. Goes like this, y'all. Comedian and Family Feud host Steve Harvey says Donald Trump has been making good on his promises to help restore America's underprivileged communities. Harvey met with Trump at Trump Tower after the election, where the two men discussed plans to partner with Trump's Department of Housing and Urban Development Secretary, Dr. Ben Carson, on an affordable housing initiative. As far as doing what he promised me he would do, he is doing it, Harvey told TMZ. I'm working with HUD. I'm going to get some housing for underprivileged people. We're going to set up some centers around the country. I met with HUD. It gonna really be well. God willing, it will work out. He's keeping his promise to what he said he gonna do. Harvey added when asked if he was happy with the job Trump has done so far. The Think Like a Man producer faced heavy criticism over his decision to work with Trump's White House. CNN contributor Mark Lamont Hill, my boy, called Harvey a mediocre Negro, rightfully so, who was seeking attention while rapper and reality TV star T.I., my dude, said Harvey should know way better than to meet with Trump. Harvey defended his decision to work with Trump, saying, change can only happen when we sit at the table. If we sit at the table, then we can have a say as to what's being eaten on the menu. I have an obligation to take a seat at the table when invited. No, you don't, sucker. You ain't got to meet with your enemy and sit down at no table and take an offering of what he got to serve? Fool, don't you know? It might be some poison. Talking about it. Dude, this is what, listen to what this fool said. Change can only happen when we meet, <laughs> when we sit at the table. If we sit at the table, then we can have a say as to what's to be eaten on the menu. When last time you went to somebody's house for dinner, lunch, breakfast, sat at the table, then told them to go in there and cook, told them what to go in there and cook or what to serve. Say, man, hey, I get where you're coming from as far as having a seat at the table and being in the room to make this, to discuss things, but if you're a peon, you ain't got no say. If you're going to be treated like a little child, you have no say of what's going to be said at the table or what kind of plans are going to be initiated. You have no say so. And Donald Trump is playing you like the sucker you are. You, you ain't making no decisions. When this dude gets out of office, no matter what you do, ain't no work you do going to be remembered as being good or helpful to the black community or in his inner cities or anybody who live in the inner city. Now he said, uh, Trump kept his promise. What I want to know is how did he keep his promise when he capped section eight and he suspended, uh, low percentage rates for, uh, a private mortgage insurance for FHA loans. So how did he do that? What promise did he make to you, Steve, on the cool? Did he promise you that um, he was going to line your pockets, shoot you some business? Did he promise you I don't know, a new reality show or something. I know you love horn for television. You do anything to get on that television screen. I don't know, did he promise you a threesome with Melania? Melania? Maybe even a vodka. You know he's strange like that. Oh, uh, 
Did he promise to send you a dick pic? I'm trying to figure it out, man. Because I don't see nothing he's done that has been helpful to the black community yet. And he's done a whole lot. Don't say you can't get nothing done in three months. See, he's done a lot of shit in three months. So I'm trying to figure out what is it that he's done that's so great? What promise has he kept? Now, planning for and creating affordable housing for more people. That's a good thing on the surface. You know, I'm, so I'm all for hood in that regard. We can create, plan, help our people who are less fortunate. It's really just the win. Now, some selfish ass people don't see that. They see, they, a lot of selfish people think, I got mine, get yours. But when people are in dire situations, people are in desperate situations, they do desperate things that could affect the quality of life for all people that live in America. See, that's the part that you don't get. You also don't get how important it is for all people to have a sense of pride about themselves and where they live. You know, uh, when you have a pride about your environment that you're in, you tend to feel better about yourself and you treat other people better. And this uh, fosters uh, a quality way of life. This, this fosters a, a sense of, uh, of community, a sense of being and respect. So all of this goes together. So when you say, Oh, I don't want them to have my money, my tax dollars. This let me tell you something about your tax dollars. Your damn tax dollars is going to pay for something else anyway, because they're gonna figure out a way to use your money on something. I don't give a damn if it's just if they just have a thousand people just staring at in one place, standing in one place at noon every day. They're going to figure out something. Okay, we got a thousand people standing in one place at noon, staring into the sky, waiting to see if there's a shift in the, in the sun. They're trying to count. They're doing, they're going to figure out a way, man, to spend your money on something. And another thing is this. Your tax dollars that you spend are proportionate to what you earn. So, just like you spending your money and your spending your tax dollars hurts you, you know the poor do spend money too, right? They, they do pay taxes, right? You understand that. It's some type of uh, general consensus out there that poor people don't pay taxes. Yeah, poor people pay taxes too. Even if you don't have a job, you go out there and you buy a candy, go, can, candy bar, you're going to put a tax on your ass. So everybody pay taxes. You ain't the only motherfucker paying taxes. So get off your high horse, man. Y'all kill me with that. Steve Harvey and Ben Carson, these super coons, they're just, their actions are just egregious to humanity. It ain't even black community, man, because they've been gone. They've been gone. It is, it's just egregious to, to humanity. Donald Trump could care less about black folks, man. Donald Trump don't care nothing about no black people. Donald Trump care about the 1% and his demented, oft colored, spectacle, imbecile supporters. That's all he care about. And the only reason why he care about those supporters, who many of them ain't going to never see the life he have, the only reason why he care about them because they're doing his work. They're the little underlings running out there doing his work and making him feel good and uh, reinforcing his ego, telling everybody, Trump's the man running behind him, sniffing up his ass like a little dog. Just all day, that's all they do, sniff his ass all day. 
talking about how great he is and how how smart he is, how rich he is. Just living, basically living vicariously through him. I heard one dude say, well, they interviewed one dude and he said, they asked him why he liked Trump. He said, because he's a man. He's a man. <laughs> if you got to do all that shit to recognize another man being a man, it's something that ain't really manly about you. You sound like you want a little piece of that Trump. You want a little piece of that Trump stump. <laughs> oh, man. So anyway, y'all, based on Donald Trump's campaign promises, I would say that he has kept his promise to be a racist, to be bigoted, to be foolish, to be, I was going to say a warmonger, but that ain't what he said he was going to be on the, on the trail, on the campaign trail. He actually said he was going to try to stay away from all of that. But again, you, you know, three months in the presidency, and he's dropping bombs already. <laughs> and y'all really believe this sucker was going to be something special. Y'all really believe that? Um, oh, I'm going to get out of here. But before I go, I got to tell y'all this. Uh, Steve Harvey got a new movie coming out. I just read it up on it. He got a new movie coming out. And what's the name of it? Um, it's called House, House Nigger Republic. Y'all make sure y'all go check it out, man. It's supposed to come out Friday. Uh, House Nigger Republican. And starring Steve Harvey with um, co-starring Ben Carson. Uh, Omarosa is also in the movie. And Stacey Dash, uh, Charles Barkley make appearances. Him and uh, uh, David Clark um, and some other people. I mean, it's, it's a bunch of them, man. It's, it's a lot of them in that movie. So, um, right now, they're already auditioning for uh, the second movie, the sequel. So, I guess it's supposed to be a big blockbuster. I mean, if they're already recruiting actors for the second movie, uh, it must, you know, must, must, must going to be something huge, man. Like, no, 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 no. How does Trump say it? It's going to be huge, huge, huge. <laughs> It's going to be huge, y'all. It's going to be huge. So y'all make sure y'all go check that out, man. You know, uh, after all, he is black. <laughs> no more talk.